The Morning Show starts right now with a breaking news alert. And that breaking news alert on the north side, a JSO officer shot and killed a man outside of a Walmart. Shooting happened at the River City Marketplace near the airport. Around 1040 last night, officers say they responded to a disturbance at the Walmart on City Square Drive there. Police say a man was inside the store and making employees uncomfortable. News for Jack's reporter Brittany Muller joins us live this morning. And Brittany, have police told you how this all unfolded yet? Yes, Vic, as you just mentioned, a man inside was making some type of disturbance, making employees uncomfortable. When that man was asked to leave, he refused. And this is the crime scene this morning. Police and the crime scene unit are all here investigating. Police say Officer Dorsellian responded to the scene around 1040 last night. JSO says the man was previously seen armed inside the Walmart. The man then left the store. That's when Officer Dorsellian confronted the man. Police say the man was crouching down as if he was hiding something with one of his hands outside the view of the officer. He then sprayed something in the officer's face. Officer Dorsalian then fired three shots and hit the man. He died here at the scene and as you can see it is still dark out. Investigators are on scene as this incident is unfolding. They are working to learn more details. An officer Dorsellian has been placed on administrative leave, which is protocol. Dorsellian has been with the sheriff's office for three years. And of course, we will keep you updated. JSO says officer Dorsellian, this is Dorsellian's first officer involved incident. And of course, we'll keep you updated. We're putting live this morning from the north side. Brittany Muller, Channel 4, the local station. Thank you, Brittany. Big story this morning, the weather, of course. It's yeah. the weekend. A lot of people have plans. And some of those plans are going to be outside, which is a little dicey, right, Rebecca? It's looking pretty nice out there right now. We're in the upper 60s. We've got partly cloudy skies and calm winds. As we make our way through the morning hours, your temperatures may drop another degree or two. We're in the upper 60s in Jacksonville and Arlington, as well as Herlong and the Cecil Commerce Center. Now, if you're by a body of water, which is in the 80s, the water temperature is keeping you a little bit milder tonight and early this morning. 77 in Jacksonville Beach, 74 in Fernandina, mid-70s at NAS Jackson, low 70s in Orange Park. Brunswick's waking up in the upper 60s. The island's in the mid-70s. Seppel is at 72, Jessup's at 78, Folkestone's at 67. So we're looking at pretty nice temperatures out there for our inland areas of southeastern Georgia where we're seeing mid to upper 60s. Upper 60s in Fargo and Valdosta. Looks like Lake City's waking up in the upper 60s as well, just like Gainesville and Alachua. 64 in Keystone Heights, upper 60s in Putnam Hall, and mid 60s in Hastings. St. Augustine's waking up in the upper 60s and low 70s. Palatka's at 63. And so your forecast for today has dried out pretty nicely. And so after this coolish start, certainly cooler than what we've seen some of the earlier days this week. We are going to see partly cloudy skies, building winds out of the northeast between 10 and 15 miles per hour, but the forecast is dried out. We're only looking for about a 20% chance for you to get swiped by a coastal shower today. We will see some overnight rain tonight into tomorrow morning, but it's not going to ruin any weekend plans. And so the forecast looks relatively dry compared to how it looked earlier this week for Saturday. We will see some showers on Sunday. It looks like we'll see some showers overnight tonight. I'll walk you through that forecast hour by hour coming up next. And more breaking news this morning. We're following a serious crash in St. John's County. It left a 19 year old woman dead and another fighting for her life. Heartbreaking news. The crash happened on A1A South near Corona Road. That's in Ponte Vedra Beach. Two teenage girls were traveling northbound when the driver lost control, went off the road and hit a tree. These details coming from the Florida Highway Patrol. State troopers say the driver died at the scene. Her name has not yet been released. A Gen Z vigil is in critical condition. She was the passenger. She's in the hospital. Happening today, deliberations continue in the trial of a former police officer accused of committing manslaughter. The jury in the trial of Zechariah Presley will reconvene at 9 this morning. In June 2018, Presley shot and killed 33-year-old Tony Green following an altercation during a traffic stop. Presley says he was defending himself. However, the ex-officer's body camera recorded him telling other officers that he fired at Green while Green was running away. Oh, we thought we were going to hear the verdict yesterday, but it didn't happen. The jury spent two hours deliberating after watching Presley's body camera video one more time. Families and supporters on both sides appear anxious to finally hear that verdict. 
We're looking for a good verdict tomorrow. A guilty verdict. Justice for Tony. It's murder, not manslaughter. It's murder, not manslaughter. We're tired, yes. We're frustrated, yes. But we're going to hang it out. We want, we waited justice for justice for this long, and we'll continue to wait. And we're expecting tomorrow the justice that we deserve, and that's guilty. News for Jax will have crews in the courtroom all throughout the day. As soon as a verdict is reached, we will bring it to you live on air and online at news4jax.com. 6.05 this Saturday morning, and we are following another breaking news alert, this time on North Watershed Drive. That's in Jacksonville. That's where police found a man with a gunshot wound to his stomach last night. He was taken to a local hospital where he is expected to recover. A person of interest is in police custody. And a Glen County deputy is accused of shooting his wife, 59-year-old Randy Austin, charged with attempted criminal homicide. Neighbors tell us the couple was on an anniversary trip in Nashville, Tennessee. According to the arrest report, Austin and his wife returned to the hotel after some drinking. Police were called to the room where they found Austin's wife had been shot in the arm and the head. Austin told officers he left a gun on the nightstand, walked away, and moments later heard a shot. We know that something happened to trigger uh, this, this event. We don't, just don't know what. And uh, if his wife survives this incident, and she, maybe she can tell the truth as to what happened. Austin is in jail on a $500,000 bond. His wife's in critical condition. We have reached out to the Glen County Sheriff's Office for comment. Right now, we haven't heard back. And a neighborhood crime alert in St. John's County. Deputies need your help finding someone involved in a holdup. At a local McDonald's, it happened last November, but video was just released yesterday. So take a look at your screen. It's McDonald's on Nature's Walk Parkway right off of 210. A robber comes in through the back door, forces the manager in the office area, grabs some cash, and then exits through the same door. If you think you recognize anything about this man, uh, the way he walks, his clothing, you're asked to call the St. John's County Sheriff's Office, or you can also call Crime Stoppers. A Lake City mother accused of trying to kill her four children by crashing into a tree is now locked up behind bars. We have this picture of 36-year-old Kalicia Williams. She was treated at the hospital for injuries but has since been released. At last check, her children are all in stable condition. Police say Williams told her children to unbuckle and, quote, the devil can't hurt us, only Jesus can cure us. She's now charged with four counts of attempted murder. Meanwhile, the jury is expected to deliberate next week in the trial of a man and woman accused of murdering an FSU law professor. Investigators found 41-year-old Dan Markle shot and killed in Tallahassee in 2014. Another man has already taken a plea deal for a 19-year sentence. News for Jack's anchor Kent Justice spoke with FSU President John Thrasher about the impact the trial is having on the school and the faculty there. Still going on. Obviously, it impacts our law school. Many of the, our, our folks in our law school know the Markles, knew the Markles, uh, and it's an unfortunate situation. Uh, the trial is currently going on uh, as we speak, and uh, it's expected to go on maybe another two or three weeks. So it's a very complicated trial. Uh, a lot of moving parts, as they say, with some folks from Miami and, and uh, you know, some very, very, uh, you know, difficult situation when the Markles divorce. So we'll just have to wait and see how it turns out. Yeah. To hear more of Kent's discussion with President Thrasher, be sure to tune in to This Week in Jacksonville. That airs tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock right here on Channel 4. And a teenager in Atlanta now dead after she was shot while she was asleep in her bedroom. The bullet, which came from outside of the home, hit and killed 18-year-old Jessica Daniels. Police found 18 shell casings that came from at least two different guns. They say there was a shootout in the street. Daniels had recently graduated from high school. Atlanta police offer a $10,000 reward now for any information leading up to an arrest. And a popular Christian radio show has uh, a host there has been held without bail inside a Winter Park jail. 59-year-old Brian Fullwider being accused of sexually abusing a child multiple times over a five-year span. Now, witness tells police this happens while he was a minister at First Congressional Church. He's now facing 30 counts of sexual battery. His attorneys are saying his client is denying the allegations and committed no crime. Fullwider co-host Friends Talking Faith 
with a rabbi every week on WMFE. The Pensacola Police Department is firing a detective who they say shot and killed a man outside of his home. Daniel Seaman has been terminated for violating the department's deadly force policy. On July 5th, Tymar Crawford drove off from an attempted traffic stop. Investigators say he struggled with police after exiting his vehicle and disarming an officer during that struggle. That's when Seaman allegedly shot Crawford several times, excuse me, seven times to be exact. The incident made national news and set off a wave of protests and demonstrations with people calling for reform. The state attorney's office has yet to determine if any criminal statutes were violated during that incident. Many of you have been frustrated by speeding drivers, but two neighbors in Atlanta took things to another level. Deputies say they attacked a charity truck driver it all started after someone accused the driver of speeding down Timber Creek Estates Drive in Georgia. Another person claims the driver flipped them the bird as they were telling him to slow down. Once the driver came to a stop, one of the neighbors hit the windshield of the truck with a sledgehammer while the other punched the windshield several times. Police were called to the scene and helped the driver leave safely. The neighbors are now facing several charges. More than 200,000 women are diagnosed with breast cancer every year. And while this can be difficult for them, it's still important to keep strong and follow the doctor's orders. How breast cancer patients can save the lives of thousands by undergoing some specific testing. That's coming up later on the morning show. And want to give you a live look outside this morning from our South Bank Sky Cam. Still dark out there. Couple cars on the road. Shaping up though to be a pretty nice Saturday. Meteorologist Rebecca Berry has more on your weekend forecast coming up. But up next, the benefits of diets can go beyond helping you just look good. The healthy eating habit that could protect your brain from a devastating disease coming up after the break.